Welcome back, everyone, to, uh, I, I believe it's episode 27 in our item series. Uh, some people are having trouble creating different categories of items to add to the database. And I know there's other categories that I want to add to my database. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll just continue along and let's just go on with the next one. I think it was I'd open it up. Yeah, over here it pops up. All right, so we've got weapons. We've got the ability to add, create, delete. We have all that working. Let's go ahead. Next one up is armors. So let's go ahead. We'll start looking at how to create armor. So I'm going to start off. Uh, we started off by creating interfaces. And again, just to reiterate, some people, I guess, haven't watched the whole series and they're wondering why I'm using interfaces and not abstract classes or, or something else. And the reason why I'm doing this is a lot of people that watch these series don't have a program and background. And I find an interface a nice, simple way to show exactly what functionality we need to expose for a class. And armor is going to be pretty much the exact same as weapon, except we're not going to have an attack. Uh, we are going to get some armor level. Well, let's just go ahead and we'll create it. So we'll go ahead, we'll create a new C-sharp script. And this is IIS. And we don't have an armor, do we? I do not see one. We'll go ahead, open this up. I believe we're putting everything in our own namespace. It's been a while since I've looked at this one here. By the time that I was gone, we went ahead and created two games on the stream, plus all the stuff I've done off the stream. Been really grooving on the new Unity networking. And while it's not the, the be all and end all yet, it's still really good. I like it. Uh, we gotta move this in. I've also gotten used to Visual Studio. So don't mind if I hit the wrong keys. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. Uh, we have to inherit from other things. So I'm gonna go ahead first off, let's get rid of all this. We do not need dictation. All right, so we've gone ahead, we've done that. Um, let's see. What do we want public for this? Well, we wanna be able to get the armor value. And the way I want the armor value is probably the way I worked with the, the weapon as far as min and max. Uh, for now, let's just give it one armor value. And I'm gonna do that by returning an array of ints. First one being the min, the next one being the max. Something a little bit different. So let's go ahead, we'll say int array. And I'm just gonna say armor. Actually in Unity, we're used to dealing with vector twos. So let's actually go ahead and just make this a vector two. We can return a min and a max that way as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to have a get and a set. And I think that's actually all we need for our armor class. So let's go ahead and we'll create that next. So I'm gonna come back into the actual scripts. I wanna go ahead and open up my weapon script. And we'll use that as a template to create the armor script. So IS armor, and we do not have that created. Let me just quickly check, I do not see it. So we're gonna have, we're gonna create that. We'll open that up as well. And as far as the namespace and everything else, we'll just go ahead and copy that right out. Remember the hotkeys on the Mac side now. And of course we'll come down here. Uh, we don't need void update or anything. We'll save that off. And of course, let's go grab the inheritance chain here. So there's really only a couple of things that it's going to change. Actually, it's only one thing that's going to change and that's the IS, IIS weapon. We won't need that. We'll be doing armor instead, but it's still going to be based off of the IS object. Uh, armor can be destructible. So we're going to get durability and everything else. And it's still going to be a game object, something that we can actually see in the real world. So we are going to need to prefab for that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this whole chain. We'll paste it in here, that, but we'll go ahead and change the IIS armor. I'll save this off and let's go ahead and we'll start implementing. And we'll go ahead and start with armor. And we didn't change this over to an interface, did we? I uh, did not. So we'll go ahead and make this an interface. I'll take care of that air force and we'll save it off, come back here. And now we can implement, implement the interface. Now I don't think we're doing anything explicitly, right? I think we're just doing it the old fashioned way. Correct. So we're gonna go ahead. We're 
implement interface. There we go. And it looks like it did all of them. And I'm not sure what those are. Let's just go ahead. We'll back that up. I wanted these ones. And we'll try it again. And uh, abstract members of model be heavy. We don't want that. Let's shrink this down. We don't want component or object uh, armor. Here we go. So this is what we want for the armor. I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest. And I'm going to go ahead and leave these region tags here for now. I'll save that off. Don't remember how to do this, I guess, with... Uh... Oh, there we go. Uh, what did I forget over here? And it's because I'm coming from mono behavior. Uh, see what happens when you take time off? <laughs> So there we go. It's the line that Unity gave me that screwed me up. And just to keep the same spacing throughout the whole project. Great. So we'll come in. We've gone ahead. We've done destructible. And looks like the only one we have left is here. Come on. There we go. So let's go ahead. We'll start making some private variables up here. And of course, we're going to use the serialized field. Uh, first, we're going to want is int. And I'm going to say current armor. I'll just say current armor. Serialized field. Int max armor. Now, keep in mind, this is different than its durability. So you could have the armor change for some reason. If you don't want to, then go ahead and maybe just have one variable there. I, I know this is something I'm going to want later on where armor can change its value under specific conditions. But do keep in mind, this is not durability. This is the armor value of it. Let's come back into weapons and we'll go see what we did here. And so we need durability. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy out this here. And equipment slots. So we'll go ahead and we'll put all of these in. Uh, maybe this one public so we can change it in the inspector. Okay. I do want a constructor for this. I'm not going to do anything with it just yet. And I don't think I actually finished it off here either. I really should go through and assign some base values here, even though everything does equal zero to start off with. I do want to put some base values in here. So I'm going to say min damage is equal to zero. Durability is equal to one. Max durability is equal to one. Prefab is equal to new game object. And the equipment slot is going to be equal to the equipment slot dot. Uh, it doesn't really match. We'll just do feet by default. Now, I remember we went ahead and created this as any num, and that's fine for now, but I know later on I am going to want to switch this out when we get into the inventory system, because I want to have specific groups of equipment slots. So you have armor slots, you have weapon slots, uh, you can have jewelry slots, whatever you want. So I want to be able to have that grouping instead of just having one big enum. Now, of course, just having the enum will work, but I just like having the structure that we get from the other way. So since these are private, I want to stick to the same naming that I'm using throughout the whole project. So I'm going to go ahead and keep those underscored. And we'll do the same thing down here. Uh, current armor is equal to zero. Max armor is equal to zero. Durability is equal to one. Max durability, you guessed it, equal to one. Prefab is equal to, going to be equal to new game object. And of course, equipment slot is going to be equal to equipment slot dot and so this is our we'll just say feet by default now let's go ahead we'll save this off and i think that's all the variables we need for this class now before we jump in and start filling this stuff out let's go ahead and see what other files we are going to need 
and make sure we don't have any errors. All right, we don't. So we're going to need a an actual database, and we're going to need some editor scripts for it. So let's come in, uh, editor. Uh, not there, maybe it's just under scripts. Uh, scriptable object, so weapon database. Looks like we have a quality, we have an object. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the IS weapon database. And we're doing almost the exact same thing. I'll go ahead and copy that. And let's start that armor database. IS Armor database, and I, I botched that one. Should have been a small R. I'll have to fix that in the actual script itself, so we'll go ahead and open that up. And since I copied it from the other one, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in here, and then just change the name. IS Armor database. And instead of being full of IS weapons, we'll be full of IS Armor. We'll go ahead and save that off, so we have that done. And as far as the editor scripting, we're going to go ahead and save that till we actually have the class completely done. And then we'll jump into the editor scripting. And it gives me a bit more time to actually review what we did. So let's jump back in. We no longer need this. We have that. And we just need to fill this out. And we'll do that when we come back tomorrow. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.